prove with uh, us, with uh, my wife's side of the family, it's important to prove that that's uh, my relationship, our relationship is not uh, uh, aided by by anyone and my by my wife's side of the family and that they know me, they we get together, get along. So and for last but not least, uh is that appendix M, which is the evidence of other uh evidence of marriage in good faith. Uh that was not mentioned in previous appendixes. There's the a summary of what it contains here, which is individuals' phone bills from the past three months uh, sent to the same address with the uh, name, address, and recipient of each phone bill highlighted. And we have here, I can show you one of them. There's my, my wife's bill here, it's sent of name and, um, and uh, our address, and my uh, bill from the same month. With my name and my address also highlighted to prove that we live in the same address. Like I said before, is it's important uh, and it's a proof of good that we got married for real, that we have a marriage in good faith. Uh, the fact that we live together. So, like I said, uh, we have here from bills from May, June, and July. Also, uh, we have our car, our national Alberta ID cards, so our provisional ID cards from my wife and from me. Uh, send it to back here the same address as well. Also, a T1 uh, summary for tax returns from my wife uh, from Money Mart, which is a place that uh, she fills her taxes. Uh, this is the spouse information here that proves that my social insurance, my um, social insurance number, my name and birthday are uh, here as the spouse information. This is up. It's also zero income spouse since in 2012. I didn't add a work permit yet. I was here as a visitor, so I didn't, uh, I wasn't able to fill my tax. But anyway, is my, um, I. My my name and my wife's uh, name here as well. Uh, so this is a photocopy of uh, my wife's file at work. That's about the emergency contact and states my wife here and uh, states her signature, her contact, her information, and uh, the emergency contact, which is me. Uh, my name my phone number, uh, the relationship wife, and the city of residence here as well uh, as my uh, I'm uh, my wife's emergency contact at work and that's can be considered a proof of good faith marriage. Uh, this is a letter from government of Alberta from the Alberta Healthcare um, Proving that uh, both of us, these are both our names, our information, birth dates, our, um, our uh, Alberta of car numbers. Um, and this letter is basically stating that um, these two persons, me and my wife, are both covered by the same um, account on Alberta uh, Health. Also, this is a letter from... Uh, our bank. We have me and my wife. We have banks. Uh, we have bank accounts on the same bank. And this letter, prove uh, it's a statement that um, we have a joint savings account. We have a savings account together. We both our names on it. And this is a letter from the bank. The bank stating that. Also, as evidence that we have matched in good faith. Also, a Costco membership. Uh, Costco is a um, wholesale, uh, what you can buy in bulk, place you can buy um, in bulk, you probably know that, and uh, it's a membership. You want to be able to buy things there, you have to have a membership, there's executive membership, business membership, and gold star membership. Um, and any membership you choose comes with a spousal card. 
uh, so you can have the applicant can uh, uh, have membership on the under the same account uh, to uh, the spouse and we did that so this is our photocopy of the application form for the Costco membership with the primary member which is my wife putting the information here and also uh, you liked a free car for your spouse yes and there's my uh, my information here and also for, uh, there's photocopies of back uh, the front and the back of our Costco memberships right here uh, this is my wife's and uh, and this is mine and um, we stayed on that cover letter here on this cover letter for this appendix we state that uh, I received a spousal card uh, stated on the application form uh, we consider that to be an important evidence to us that we have a relationship in good faith other evidence that we didn't put here but it could put would be for instance wills uh, if I did a will uh, giving everything to her or she did a will stating me as a beneficiary as well uh, that could be considered good marriage in good faith as well as an evidence of marriage in good faith I mean also a letter of, from the landlord if uh, the place you live is rented uh, you could get a letter from the landlord saying that you live together to, uh, on the, the the agreement and um, just to give examples for instance if uh, one of the spouses has uh, life insurance or uh, any other benefits in term health benefits as well uh, to state the other spouse as a beneficiary uh, could also be included on this application as well uh, this is just a couple tips a couple ideas for uh, uh, what could be included in this kind of application uh, so because it's oh uh, before I forget also the person uh, this has to be sent on a separate envelope um, Put on an envelope, but sent with the, the same application, which is an open work permit application. Uh, when, and I'm referring to this just uh, for in Canada applications. Uh, after the initial assessment, which right now, and I checked the citizenship immigration website uh, today, uh, the they state the initial assessment as ten months. Uh, before it was six, uh, but now that uh, unfortunately they are on strike the immigration some immigration offices in Canada and overseas are on strike so uh, you can expect delays that's another tip from uh, for me send the application as soon as possible because uh, you can expect delays unfortunately because they have taken strike action immigration offices are taking strike action unfortunately so anyway like I was saying uh, an application for the when the person is being sponsored is inside Canada, which is my case, has two stages. The first stage, which is in the initial assessment, the assessment of the sponsor and the person being sponsored, it takes, like I said, right now it's taking 10 months. A uh, couple of months from now could be more, could be less, but I'm uh, taping this, uh, I'm recording this video on uh, August 12, 2013, so. Uh, and at this very moment that states that's 10 months as an approximate processing time, unfortunately. Anyway, uh, the step two is the medical check, background check, police checks, etc. Uh, and when a person is applying from inside Canada, and this was one of the main reasons that made uh, us to decide to apply from inside Canada, uh, was the fact that after the initial assessment and if the application is approved, uh, the applicant will receive an open work permit, which allows the the person to uh, um, to work in any place without needing a labor market opinion or uh, or to apply for work permit that has conditions. For instance, my work permit right now as a temporary foreign worker is a closed work permit uh, as 
states uh, name of my employer, name of my job position, the location, the conditions of my work permits, that I cannot study, I cannot work for other employment employer. So uh, several restrictions on it. And um, with the open work permit, which is what permanent residents have, uh, none of those restrictions ex exist. Uh, with the open work permit, you can have more than one job, one job, which does not happen uh, as a temporary foreign worker and you can work anywhere without uh, needing to apply for a new work permit or to, to apply for jobs that have a, a labor market opinion and which is one document that is necessary for the open for the work permit application so uh it's basically better um like i said uh, on previous videos i'm unemployed right now unfortunately uh i no longer work for the employer that states that is stated on my work permit. Uh, right now, I'm trying to to get another job uh, with an employer. I have to apply for a new work permit. Uh, the employer has to have a labor market opinion, etc. So, lots of complications, assholes. Uh, uh, it's also asshole. <clears throat> I mean, and <coughs> I mean, um. And with open work permits, as a, temp a permanent resident, I do not need LMOs or new work permit applications and none of those problems, which facilitate the time. And the permanent resident has an open work permit. An important fact is that when sending application in Canada, you have no not only to send the application for all everything that I that I sent all the forms and support documentation that I showed before, but also uh, you need to send. Um, a separate application sent on the same envelope uh, for open work permit. Uh, that way, after the initial assessment and if the application is improved, approved in principle, uh, the principal applicant will receive the open work permit right right away, uh, so that the person can work for an employer, any place in Canada. Uh, before um, the stage two is completed, so before the receiving permanent resident card, permanent resident status, etc. Okay, so this is uh, the my open work permit application as well. Again, there's a document checklist here. This is what it looks like. Uh, this document checklist uh, is for other applications as well, there is no, uh, also work permit, also students or refugee claimants or restoration of temporary resident status, so uh, you can get the documents that apply to your situation, in this case, work permit. So, uh, under this document checklist states that you have to send an uh, application to change conditions, extend my stay, or remain in Canada as a worker, which is the form IMM5710, uh, which is the form that I'm going to show uh, right there. Also, this completed document checklist, the form IMM5556. This tempered receipt, and like I said, uh, you, like I said before, uh, you can uh, order um a, a receipt from the citizenship immigration canada they they have to order by mail you receive it right away uh by mail and then you have to go to a canadian financial institution where you pay the fees which is 150 dollars for a work permit 150 dollars canadian dollars uh and they stamp their receipt to prove that that amount was paid and you send that along with the application I, on this case, I sent the internet receipt. I, uh, I paid my internet as well. You can apply for a work permit and pay online. So um, I, uh, uh, I have the internet receipt here as well that I'm going to show. Use of a representative if applicable. If you use uh, agents or immigration lawyer, which was not my case, so it does not apply to me. Uh, so the declaration of common law union uh, if applicable if you are in a common law relationship or photocopy of marriage certificate if applicable which is my case i send a photocopy of marriage certificate as well also documents 
for the work permit itself, like for a copy of passport pages, for a copy of current immigration documents, if you have one, uh, etc. They also have other situations like uh, living caregiver, uh, if you are a living caregiver, so it's another program, then not temporary foreign worker. Provide for a copy of an employment contract between you and the employer, so uh, it's several options as well. Student and refugee claimant, and refugee restoration of temporary resident status, there's a document checklist for any one of that, anything of these situations. Anyway, this is the receipt for the $150. Like I said before, uh, for any application for um, Safe Ship Immigration Canada, I advise the person to uh, put the receipt on top of the application so they can see right away that the fee, the appropriate fees were paid so this application can be processed because they received the the amount of money they need to be paid to process it. So this is the main form. This is what it looks like. It's the form IMM5710. It's called Application to Change Conditions, Extend My Stay, or Remain in Canada as a Worker. So, uh, here I have to put, I'm applying for one or more of the following. Uh, if you're applying for an open work permit, uh, along with a permanent residence application through the sponsor's spouse visa, uh, you have to put a work permit with a new employer. Um, You could also apply for a work permit with the same employer if uh, you are applying. These forms uh, can also be used to an extension of a work permit if the person is a temporary for a worker, etc. So this can be used for several uh, situations. Anyway, they ask the personal details here uh, about name, sex, date of birth, place of birth, current country of residence, uh, marital status, the name of the spouse or partner. Uh, they ask uh, if you are married or in a common law relationship, is your spouse or common law partner a Canadian citizen or permanent present? Yes or no? It's an, just a no question. Yeah. Also, uh, uh, languages, which uh, native language. Uh, if your native language is not English or French, which language do you use most frequently? Also, information about the passport, passport number, country of issue, and the issue date and expiry date. Also, contact information as well, like it was on the other forms for the sponsor common partner uh, application for the sponsorship. Uh, they ask again mailing address, telephone, alternate telephone if you have more than one, email. Coming to Canada, uh, they ask details about date and place of the original entry in Canada, also the original purpose for coming to Canada, also the date and place of the most res uh, recent entry into Canada, if not the same as the original entry. And uh, if applicable, to put the document number. Here, uh, they ask your doc the document number of the most vis the most recent visa record, study permit, work permit, or temporary resident permit issued to you. So in this case, I put my uh, I have a work permit, so I put the number of my uh, work permit. So well, on the third page, this is five pages. Um, details of intended work in Canada. So here. I ask what type of work permit are you applying for and uh, you have to select there are several options you have to select the option open work permit if you're applying like I said for open work permit to the along to send along with the application for permanent residence through the sponsor spouse visa in Canada class so um, they ask name of employer as a open work permit, uh, it's not attached to any employer. You can work for anywhere else. And if you don't have a prospective employer right away, like uh, you can put any suitable employer. And they also ask address of employer. You can put address of any suitable suitable employer. 
uh, they ask intended location of employment in Canada. I put the province, I put the town, I put the address, address of any Swedish employer within the city of, and I put the city that I'm living in. Here. Uh, my occupation can all be, as I don't have uh, an occupation specified yet, so I put any suitable occupation. So to keep it open as well, brief description of duties, any suitable duties or tasks. Duration of uh, expected employment. Um, I put oh, I, I don't have. I put the dates. I have to think about the date. I think the application might be approved in principle. The so those ten months for the, um, the initial assessment. So from there to two years from that because. Uh, and this was an important thing that I have to to clarify as well, is that uh, even if the work, the permanent residence application is approved, uh, permanent residence through sponsor spouse visa because there are other programs for a person to get permanent residence. So like I was saying, uh, for a person to get permanent residence, for um, if a person gets a permanent residence, see, uh, if the person lives uh, is married for less than two years with the, the sponsor and or they don't have the couple does not have children in common uh, the foreign citizen one uh, is gonna if the permanent residence application is approved that person is gonna receive a conditional permanent residence for two years which means that uh, on those two years from the the dates the permanent resident that the person is granted permanent resident status for two years from uh, on that time the person has to live with the sponsor with in this case the the spouse uh, because unfortunately uh, there's several cases of marriage fraud uh, not only in Canada but in any other countries and this was a measure that since you've immigration Canada decided to create to prevent Match frauds, because uh, unfortunately there's people that uh, married a Canadian citizen or permanent resident and apply for for permanent residence to sponsor spouse visa and the application is approved. The person comes to Canada and then after days or weeks they disappear, and the the Canadian citizen one is uh, uh, as charges to uh, 